traditional systems for budgeting and planning revolve around existing financial statements and structures. These structures are designed for regulatory reporting and compliance and financial reporting. You plan by P&L category, down to the account level probably, within the confines of the chart of accounts. This is fine as a method of capturing numbers as dollar inputs and aggregating information from across the organization. But these numbers hide as much as they reveal. There are multiple spreadsheets being used by people in various roles. Engineering, maintenance, processing, HR, geology, and so on. They use them to manage their parts of the business in a way that makes sense to them. They will often enter the outputs of those submodels as their inputs for the budget or forecast. And so the link is broken between operational drivers and financial performance. We need a planning tool which incorporates the business logic, the thought, and the subject matter expertise of everyone in the organization to properly leverage all resources. To do this, you need a software tool which allows you to build models that reflect the way you think about your business. These models need to be integrated with your financials, but not defined or restricted by them. The way we do that in Alight Planning is through customizable off-financial worksheets. For example, you have a physicals plan, probably taken directly from your mind planning system. Here in Alight Planning, we have set up our physicals in their own clearly identified and easy to find area. They can be imported, copied and pasted, or manually entered. What we're looking at here are planned or budgeted physicals for this fiscal year, starting in July 2012 through June 2013. Actual numbers can be brought in every month as they become available. The fact that these physicals exist in these models, this model alongside the financial budget is apparent. What's not so immediately obvious is that they are fully integrated with the financial plan. If we change the physicals assumptions, these changes will ripple through to the P&L and beyond. To illustrate that, I'm going to open another pane here. This is called the key measures window. It's a place where you can arrange key inputs or metrics in a logical way so that they can be manipulated to view their impact on costs and revenues. As an illustration here in a light planning, by the way, these shaded cells, darker shaded cells, are input cells. These non-shaded cells are calculations based on business logic, uh, based on the inputs for the physicals in this particular case. You can see here that my mind or for July, my mind or for July, both 5,000. If I change this value here in my source, where I'm storing and loading my physicals to 5,500, for example, that also changes down here in the key measures. And similarly, changing this down here changes it here. You're changing it at source. That's how these key measures works. So what's really interesting about this is that changes made here ripple through the model. Let's go to the P&L for a second. And I'm going to hide the monthly details so that we can see what happens here when I change the physicals. Let's look at a summary of operational costs. So say, for example, I want to you know, increase these by 10%, increase my mind or by 10% select from October. I can select that, use my spread function to add a percentage, let's say 10% to each in this particular scenario. Click OK. Let's change these values here. And it's also increased our operational costs, which were 390, 390, 390 million and increased into 396 million. So we can see that changing these drivers here and these physicals ripples through to the P&L. That's because our physicals numbers are integrated with our financial plan. Of course, physicals are not the only variables which impact the P&L. Given that commodities are priced in US dollars, the exchange rate to US dollars has an impact on revenues. 
So we have that set up here as a key revenue driver. Changing this rate from 1.03 to 1 for the entire year will, we will see, change our revenue for the entire year, fiscal 2013, from 546 to 562 million. In planning activities, what we usually want to answer are what if questions like this. What will the impact of currency fluctuations be on my base budget? In a light, you can easily answer this type of question by creating a new scenario. New scenarios can be created on the fly. Let's go back to our base budget for a second. In our base budget, you can see that our revenue is 341, operational costs are 310. If we move this down here, our net earnings are $4 million, just over $4 million. So what we want to do is maybe take this scenario, make a copy of it, So we're going to call this one version 4 and let's maybe give it a description saying FX rate changed to parity with USD. So that has created a new scenario here called budget FY 2012 V4. You can see there were some other scenarios here for the different rounds of the budget. So let's change the rates here. Change it back to parity again. And that's changed our number here. Now let's see how that lines up with the base scenario by running a scenario analysis report. Here we can see that our iron ore sales for fines and for lumps are different by about $5 million each, causing an overall variance of $10 million. So that's this scenario. We're comparing it to the base scenario. So this lets us, lets us ask those what-if questions and answer them all in the one conversation. We can even drill into the revenue and see what's driving this variance. So here. We can maybe look at our units and our rates and see that our variance is exclusively driven by rate in this case. So there's no unit variance in terms of the number of tons of iron ore sales, but there is a rate variance. So we can see that the rate variance is 449 for fines per ton and 360 for lump per ton. So that's one example. Let's also look at another example, perhaps. Going back to our P&L. See what else we have to change in here. Key cost drivers, for example. We have at the bottom here, fuel cost per ton. Um, so if we change that from 227 as it is right now in this scenario, then we want to change that to 250. Again, immediately we see a variance here in our operational costs. We can drill into that variance. See that this is affecting our ore haulage. We can actually go further than that. Drill down. Let's hide our units and rate here for a second. And see which department that's affecting. That's in ore haulage. It's affecting our road trains. It's actually affecting our account 5401. So see here that we can drill, drill through to the detail and see what's driving changes in costs right down to the account level. What's important to note here is that we're looking at the change at the account level, but the change is, is, is a result of a change in an operational driver. As well as assumptions, you can also set up metrics in a light to benchmark performance. If we change back to our budget here, show our details, the monthly detail. Let's go back over to the connections worksheet and look at this 
line item here, labor cost per ton. We can see that the labor cost per ton is pretty high at the start of the year, but trends downwards as the year goes on. If we want to, we can even graph this value by selecting the numbers we want to graph, clicking on our graph tool here, expanding it, and here we can see a nice trend of our labour cost per tonne over time for the months we have selected. You can in fact graph any value, any series of values in your light model very quickly. For example, if I want to graph my mind ore to see a visual representation of my ramp up for the first nine months of the year, I just select my mind ore values, click on graph, and immediately the context of my graph changes. Now I can see my mind door trending over time. Moving on from the graphs, you can see here that our key cost drivers in this particular model are contract costs per ton. At Alight we talk a lot with customers about planning at the right level. We've seen that this particular model is simplified because contract services are used so contracted rates are driving the major cost centers. In this case, the contract rates are the correct level at which to plan, because they are the truest estimate of the cost to the people doing the planning. That's not always the case. Let's take a quick look at another model to illustrate that it's possible to plan at a much more detailed level. Here we see that sub-models have been built out for various mining activities drilling down into these activities we can see various groups of assumptions regarding materials, labor, contractors and equipment for example. Drilling into production blasting we can see the assumptions behind it by drilling in here. You can see that this is an extremely low level of detail Again, all of these manual entries are the planning assumptions. These non-shaded uh, cells, sorry, are the calculated values. This goes into quite a lot of detail here. For example, if we go into explosives. So these sub-models all consist of some key assumptions, but also many calculations based on those drivers. You can see here that the planning is at a very detailed level, perhaps too detailed given the materiality of some of these items. I mention this example only to illustrate the fact that the light is flexible in the level of detail it allows you to plan at. Getting your driver-based budget in place is a first step. After that, you will likely want to forecast on a monthly or on a quarterly basis, but you'll want to ensure that the process of forecasting does not interfere with your budget and that you're easily able to compare your forecast to your original budget, preferably, preferably at all levels which you, at which you originally planned. In a light, that's achieved by segregating budgets and forecasts into what we call time frames. Time frames allow you to roll forward from a budget to a forecast while keeping the original budget intact. In this model, we have a forecast which was created at the end of the fiscal first quarter in October. If I open the forecast 23, 2013 time frame and then the forecast for FY 2013 for October, we can see that we have three months of actuals. So if I go to my financials, this may be clearer. We have three months of actuals and nine months of planned now forecast data, giving us a total for the year, which is now our forecast total for a year. So now that we have this, we can also begin to modify the forecast numbers for the remaining nine months based on the latest available data. Again, using key measures, for example, we can go in here and start changing our key cost drivers. Say, for example, you want to change your haulage cost per ton. These values now are in this forecast time frame, totally 
removed and divorced from our original budget time frame. So we can change these and they will have no effect on the original budget values. So for example, maybe we want to change this, increase these by 10%. Again, highlight them, use the spread function, add a percentage to each, click OK, and they're changed. Once our forecast is complete, it's common practice to analyze how it compares to our original budget. Again, Alight's built-in analysis tools will allow you to compare anything in the system to anything else in the system. Scenarios to scenarios, versions to versions, and of course, forecast to, for to budget. In this report, I'm going to hide the monthly detail, and I'm going to hide our key measures. Here, I can see in this column, I've got my forecast for FY 2013. In this column, I have my budget for the same year. Here, I've got my variance, and I can see my variance at all levels of the P&L. I can even go off and look at more detail, see my variance by the various activities or high-level departments, drill down into those high-level departments, see what's driving the actual variances, or even go to my operational assumptions. Look at my key cost drivers, for example, and my key costs, and see what's driving the changes in these. Again, I can look at this at a dollar amount level, or I can drill into this, look at the units and the rate variances, and see that a certain amount of my variance is caused by a variance in volume, in rate, sorry, in units, and a certain amount of my variance is caused by changes in rates. So some of these here, for example, these items here, my processing contract and my train loading contract, um, have no variance in rates or next to no variance in rates, um, but they do have a variance driven by a change in the amount of ore processed or ore transported. So again, in a light, because of the integrated nature of your model, because of the fact that both budgets and time for budgets and forecasts can exist within the same framework it's possible then to report on those and compare them to each other at all levels down to units and rates down to operational drivers right down to the account level as well as a short term financial planning for mining also has as we all know a much longer term component life of mine planning a light also enables this if I return to my budget here, I can see that as well as my FY 2013 budget, I also had a life of mine budget. Again, if I switch to my financials, my P&L, I can see my life of mine budget for the five years of this mine. A light will allow you to plan up to 20 years on a monthly level. If we look at the details behind this, we can see that there's monthly detail summing up to annual amounts for each of the years here. Uh, Alight will also let you plan for much longer than this if you plan for the out years in a quarterly or annual basis. So you can see in this particular report that we have a budget for the entire life of mine. As with annual budgets or forecasts, you can create multiple life of mine budgets or forecasts and compare them to each other in the same way as before. For example, if we switch back again to the forecast time frame, we have a report in here that compares the original life of mine budget with the latest life of mine forecast. It's pretty early in the life of this mine, so the variances are small in absolute terms, but you can see how a light enables planning for much longer time horizons if necessary.